Hey guys, what is up? Avi here and welcome back to The Codex. In this video, we're going to be continuing our Git and GitHub series for beginners. And today we're going to be making our very first commit on Terminal to our local repository. So in the last video, we understood what the three Git states were. Okay, you have some unstaged files, you put them in the staging, and then you finally commit them. And we're going to go through that entire process today using our GitHub intro repository. So go ahead and open up Terminal. I have Terminal opened up right over here. Um, actually, I'm going to use iTerm, which is, again, a very similar tool, just like Terminal. And inside of this, guys, let's go ahead and use our newfound command line knowledge to CD into the directory where our local repository exists. So that means go ahead and type in CD and then wherever you saved it. For me, it's in documents and then code. And then if I type LS, I can see GitHub intro. So I can type CD GitHub intro. Okay. So just by doing that, I am now in the GitHub intro folder. If I type LS, I can go ahead and see that there are two files, readme.md and shoppinglist.txt. So we're going to go ahead and go through the three Git states. And through this video, we're going to make our first commit. So what does that mean? Right now, all of our files are unstaged. None of the changes that we've made, well, we haven't made any to begin with, but no changes are currently being registered in these files. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is open up shoppinglist.txt using the command open on terminal. So I'm going to say open and then shoppinglist.txt. Okay. And now when I open this up, as you can see, I have this shopping list. I'm going to go ahead and increase the size. Okay. So I currently have apples, oranges, bananas, cherries, carrots, cereal, cucumbers, eggplants, etc., etc. And what I'm going to go ahead and do, guys, is remove the last item, whatever that last item is for you. And now I'm going to go ahead and add a new item. And in this scenario, I'm going to go ahead and add, um, let's go to avocado. So avocados. And there we go. We have removed an item. We have added an item. Again, you can modify the shopping list however you want. Mine might look a little bit different than yours, and that's totally okay. So go ahead and save this. Now we've added an item, and to see what modifications we've made in a repository, I'm gonna teach you of a very useful command known as git status. Git status is probably the most used command in Git, and it allows you to tell, it basically tells you what the current status is of your local repository. So if I type git status, I'm gonna go ahead and see that my branch is up to date with the branch and the remote server. I have modified shoppinglist.txt and this change that I have modified is not been staged for commit. So shoppinglist.txt, the current change I just made has not been staged for commit. This green that you see over here, that's because I was testing this out from before. Don't worry about this for now. You should all see this. Changes not staged for commit, modified shoppinglist.txt. This means that shoppinglist.txt is currently in the unstaged state and we want to go ahead and stage that. And in order to do that, we're going to go and use the git add command. The git add command will go ahead and take all the changes we made and stage them. So git add shoppinglist.txt, shoppinglist.txt, will go ahead and add these changes and stage them for our commit in the future. Now, if I go ahead and type git status, I'm going to go ahead and see on branch master changes to be committed. I have modified shopping list at txt. It's in green. So when a file is in green, that means that this file is up to date and all of the changes have been accounted for. However, if you ever see a red file, that means that there's a new change and those changes in that file have not been accounted for. So now if I go ahead and make a modification to our text edit file, let's say I make it avocado and save that. Then if I type get status, I'm going to see that our previous change, the one where we had plural avocados that has been modified and that sort of change has been staged. However, the new change that we made where we removed the S in the last word, that change has not been staged and Git is telling us, Hey, change is not staged for commit is that change right over there. So let's go ahead and add this file. And I'm going to teach you of a few nifty tricks of staging files in Git. First, there is Git add dot. And this is pretty common. What this means is you're going to add all of your files in the repository. Git add dot basically says that, okay, I'm going to go through this repository one by one. Whoops. Let me go to code. And over here, whatever the files are, if there are any changes, I'm going to stage them. Bam, 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 bam. And all of those files have been staged. That is what Git add dot does. If I want to stage all the files of a specific type, 
I can say get add asterisk.txt. And then what that does is it's going to go ahead and add or stage all the changes made in the txt files in this repository. So what we've done now, guys, is we have taken our very own um, file, we've modified it, and we've added it, we've staged it. The last stage in our three git stages is committing and to commit your changes and stash them locally and save them, that is done through the git commit command. You can say git commit and then dash m to type a message. And then inside of this, go ahead and just type something. For now, I'm gonna say um, added avocados or avocado, I believe. Is that the last change we made? Yes, it is. So git commit dash m added avocado and then go ahead and hit enter. So what we just did, guys, is we went through the three stages of Git. We had unstaged files, whatever changes we made, we staged them, and then we committed these files locally. So now there is this sort of ID given to our commit. It has a message called added avocado. And now what we can go ahead and do is we'll always have this local commit saved on our sort of local repository. If we ever wanna go back to this commit, we can. If we ever wanna see this commit again, we can. And it's a very easy way, just like in Pokemon, how there's a save state button. This is exactly what we've done. We've saved the state, we've saved all of our progress. We can always go back to this in a future time. Fantastic job, guys. Thanks so much for listening and I'll see you in the next video.